In this video, we're going to take a look at adding text and just adding some text formatting and what that means. We can copy and paste text from other applications if we want to, but you want to copy the text, not the object that the text is in, if that makes sense. So before you jump into text, you want to make sure that you can use your local fonts. And to do that, come up to the menu up here, come down to help an account, and you can access this from a couple places, and you'll see open font settings. Click on that. And if you scroll down, you should see that we have the local fonts are either enabled or disabled. By default, they're disabled. So you want to make sure that you download this little installer if you haven't done that already so you can work with your fonts. You have access to Google fonts in here as well as your local fonts. So we're going to come back to recent and then come back to your travel app here. You can double click to open it up. And we're going to add a little bit of text. We're going to do it over here. So I'm going to use two fingers on my trackpad to move over. You can use the space bar to move over to get to the hand tool. And we're going to draw a box first so we can put some text over this picture so it's easier to read. So come to the rectangle tool and just draw a little rectangle. We'll put it right up over here off to the side. That looks good. Let's change the color so you can come to the fill. Let's make it a darker color. And we can change the opacity. So come to the opacity right up here. And I'm just going to do this. You can actually use your arrow keys up and down or shift, press shift and arrow to go up and down. You can do that as well. So I'll do it about 90%. Might make that a little different color, maybe black, that's fine. And let's add some text. So come to the text tool up here, and you can either click and start typing, or click and drag to create a text area. Click and drag to create a text area. And we'll type in North West Hikes. Now it's going to be tough to see, and I think I misspelled it, that's fine. Go ahead and select the text, you can drag across to select. And if you look on the right, you should see now that we have all our text formatting options. If you click on the ellipsis right here, you can actually make it so that these objects are auto resized. In other words, they will change size based on the width, the height, or fixed. Right now, this is going to be fixed, so it won't change in size, even if you add a bunch of text. If you choose width, it's actually going to make it really small, and it'll keep going to the right. And that way, it will never go down. It'll never wrap the text. But if you go to height, it'll let you change it. So there's a couple things we can do here. Now, if you choose height, for instance, you want to come back to this, and what we're going to do is we're going to resize it. So if you click to, to select the object, there you go, you can resize it again. And we don't have to select the text within if we don't want. We can select the text object. You can come here and choose your font, your formatting, all kinds of things. I'm just going to change the font size here and make it bigger. Let's see what we want to do here. That looks pretty good. Right align. Let's change the color. You can go to fill. I'll choose a white or a light gray or something like that. You can pick whatever color you want, try different things. Maybe I'll change the word hikes down here to a different size so it looks a little bit better. Now what I'm doing is I'm pressing the shift key and I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard to make the font size larger. Now if you select all the text or select the text object, we can come in here and we can change things like the line height. We've got a lot of options, paragraph spacing. Come to line height and you can scrub across these values here. So you can scrub left and scrub right. It's the little icon to the left of the field there. Now click back on the ellipsis here. And you should see that we do have a lot of other options here. Capitals, lower, uppercase, underline, strike through. A lot of different things we can do here. And if you don't want to see the Google web fonts, which are part of this, you can turn them off here. Otherwise, if you want to choose a font family, you just click on the font family and go for it. There's a lot of fonts in there, and you'll see the fonts from your local system as well. All right, let's add a little text to the button down here just to get that done. So click on the T to go to the text tool. Go ahead and click down here just to add some text, and we'll type log in. And you can select that. Center align it so that it's always going to be center aligned. Let's change the color to white. We could save a color if we wanted to for white instead of having to make, keep making it. And let's change the font size. And you can drag it in place over here if you want to. So it's got the selection tool selected. You should be able to move it over. And you should see smart guides. Now what I would do is this. We can actually go in and make sure that as a button, if this is going to change size, we can change the size of this text frame to make it larger if we want to do that. And we can come over to the ellipsis and say we only want the height to change but we want the width to change, and since it's center aligned, the button text will always stay in the center. So that's good. So leave it at width. 
close that up, and you can align it to the button. So if you shift click the button to select both objects, scroll all the way up over here, we can do a center align and do it that way. There we go. Now we're going to group them together with them selected. So if you right click on them or control click on them, you can see group selection. As you can see, there are a fair amount of options for formatting and working with your text in here. And, and I just wanted to give you an idea of what's available. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to attack and work with organizing content using layers. Layers are an important part of working with web and app designs so that we can keep our content organized and make it easier to select among a lot of other reasons, actually. Now in Figma, content in the layers panel, which is on the left, is actually organized by frames. In this video, you'll explore layers and see how you can use them to your advantage in Figma. Now the layers panel is actually docked on the left here, and if we want to, we can make it a little bit wider, but we can't make it very narrow. It's gonna go as far as it is. If you want to hide it, you can come up here to the menu, right up here, and you're going to see we have view right there, and you'll see layers panel. So we can actually turn off or hide a lot of this different types of content that we've got out here. Now the layers panel is organized, like I said, by frames. If you look in here, if you hover over things, you're going to see it's going to actually highlight it out there, even the individual objects within a frame that you've got. Now, just like other programs, these are organized according to the frames out there in the canvas. So you can see hikes is the farthest to the right, etc. Now the ordering of the content here makes sense because if you've ever used layers before, you can see that things are stacked one on another. Now what I want to do is I want to take this image right here, and if you hover over it out there, you'll see it's actually going to highlight it in the layer stack. I want to take that and I want to put it behind all the content. So you can drag that up or down to move it around, which is kind of cool. And that way we've got our content at the top up here. Let's make this rectangle a little bit shorter actually, just so it looks a little better. Now we're going to go in and we're going to take that and turn that into a component so we can reuse it later. But one of the other things I love about the layers panel is that we can actually lock content. We can lock individual objects if we want to. We can hide content if we want to from here. A lot of the typicals. You can also double click on objects and rename them if you want to do that. Or even see what's in a group for instance. Each one of these can be toggled open and closed so you can kind of keep things a little bit more organized. Now what's interesting about layers is that like Photoshop and Illustrator and programs like that, we don't actually create layers in here. It depends on what's out here, what frames we create, what content we add, etc. There's no new layer button in here. And a lot of programs are starting to go that way. Now, if you come to one of the icons here, you can actually double click on the icon to the left, not the name, and it will zoom in so that we can see the object or whatever it's talking about, which is actually really useful. Like other applications, if you want to take an object, you can actually duplicate it by option dragging on Mac or alt dragging on Windows to make a copy. Now, I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on that object and you'll see we've got a lot of things we can do here. And I just want to delete this. So I'll press escape. I don't see delete in there. So you can press backspace or delete to delete it if you did that. So the layers panel is really pretty straightforward, something we're going to be using quite a bit. It does share with pages here. So if you see the pages, you'll see that it's part of the panel. And if you go from one page to the next, if you come here and actually click on one of these, you'll see that the layers panel is only for that individual page, which is actually really useful, I think. All right, let's try and fit everything back in the window. If you press shift one, you can kind of zoom to fit everything. There's a lot of keyboard commands we can use in here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into one of my favorite features out here. We're going to start to talk about components that allow us to work smarter. 